We begin this news hour in the UK, where after days of chaos in the British government, the Prime Minister Liz Truss has announced her resignation, becoming the country's shortest serving Prime Minister. She said she couldn't deliver the mandate on which she'd been elected and there would be another vote in the Conservative Party to choose her successor. She's been under severe pressure both from within and outside her party during her six weeks in the job. She was forced to do a massive U-turn on her key economic policies. Two senior cabinet ministers quit in less than a week. And by Wednesday night, a disorderly vote in Parliament meant her position had become untenable. I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. Families and businesses were worried about how to pay their bills. Putin's illegal war in Ukraine threatens the security of our whole continent. And our country has been held back for too long by low economic growth. I was elected by the Conservative Party with a mandate to change this. We delivered on energy bills and on cutting national insurance. And we set out a vision for a low tax, high growth economy that would take advantage of the freedoms of Brexit. I recognise though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. This morning I met the chairman of the 1922 committee, Sir Graham Brady. We've agreed that there will be a leadership election to be completed within the next week. This will ensure that we remain on a path to deliver our fiscal plans and maintain our country's economic stability and national security. I will remain as Prime Minister until a successor has been chosen. Thank you. Liz Truss. Well, Ms. Truss's resignation kickstarts a contest to find the next Conservative leader and Prime Minister, which should produce a result by next Friday. But opposition parties said it was time for a general election. And this is not just a soap opera at the top of the Tory party. It's doing huge damage to our economy and to the reputation of our country. And the public are paying with higher prices, with higher mortgages. So we can't have a revolving door of chaos. We can't have another experiment at the top of the Tory party. There is an alternative, and that's a stable Labour government. And the public are entitled to have their say. And that's why there should be a general election. We are ready to form a government to stabilise the economy and implement a real plan for growth, for living standards, to help people through a cost of living crisis. And that's the choice now, a stable Labour government or this utter chaos from the Conservatives. Keir Starmer. And speaking a short time ago to Arise News, the leader of the Liberal Democrats echoed Mr Starmer's call for a general election. Thanks, thanks for your time. Is it time for a general election? Liberal Democrats think we need a general election. The Conservatives are failing our country. They can't provide the leadership that our great country needs. Uh, and the only way out of the mess is a general election. How likely is that, though, within the Conservatives' gift to call an election rather than the opposition, isn't it? Well, Liberal, Liberal Democrats are calling on Conservative MPs to do their patriotic duty, to put the national interest above their own personal and party interest. And if they did that, we would absolutely have a general election. But you're right, it depends on them, and maybe uh, they won't, and they'll have to answer for their constituents if they fail to put the national interest first. And that's the leader of the uh, Liberal Democrats in the UK, Ed Davey, speaking exclusively there to Arise Chief Correspondent John Cookson, who is at Westminster uh, at the moment. Uh, let's cross live there and speak to John. Uh, great to see you, John. Um, a moment of high drama in the UK in what has been an unusually turbulent pr uh, period in British politics. You've been watching British politics for many years. Have you ever seen anything that comes remotely close to this? 
Hey Charles, good to see you. No, I have not. Uh, even going back to Maggie Thatcher's days when things were very turbulent there, nothing on this scale. Uh, to have lost a Prime Minister, a Home Secretary and a Chancellor in, in one week is a record, let alone all the uh, shenanigans in the last uh, weeks and we had, the, the, of course, the leadership race before this trust was uh, selected. And now she's gone. I mean, it, it's, it's just incredible. It's only, what, six weeks since I was in Downing Street reporting for Arise News and Liz Truss walked in the, as the new Prime Minister and today uh, she's gone. Uh, it all came to a head this morning, as, as you say, with a visit by Sir Graham Brady, the head of the 1922 Conservative uh, Committee, which oversees the election of a new leader, a new leader of the party. And uh, look, he, he must have said, look, Liz, the game's up. I've been sounding out uh, MPs uh, and they want you to go, which was no big surprise because we in the media have been hearing that for, for, for days now, that uh, every day that goes by, every day that uh, she stays in power, it's damaging for the Conservative Party. So she's threw in the towel uh, today uh, with dignity, as it were, rather than being kicked, dragging and screaming out of uh, uh, Downing Street, uh, saying that she couldn't fulfil uh, the mandate. So uh, the race now on very much, Charles, for uh, a new leader uh, to take her place. Well, absolutely, John. And just explain the process of getting in the next prime minister for our international audience, because, I mean, she did say that there would be a new leader of the Conservative Party in a week, and that leader then becomes prime minister. But it took several weeks for her to be elected as leader of the Conservative Party. So how are they going to do it? Just details are starting to trickle out tonight, uh, Charles, as to how this is going to happen. Uh, the, the, the people who are up for uh, nomination, as it were, will put their names forward. And Sir Graham Brady says that uh, the bar is going to be set really high because they want to rush this through uh, but by a week on Friday, which is uh, absolutely a, a tall order. Uh, as you say, looking back, it took weeks uh, for the Conservative Party as a whole to select trust. Well, that's not going to happen this time, although the Conservative Party members, all 160,000 of them, are going to be consulted as well as MPs. But what Sir Graham Brady cleverly perhaps has decided to do is set the bar very high, uh, Charles, and he says that the, 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 the people, the two going forward, will have to get the vote of 100 MPs which uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say will uh, leave out the likes of Kemi Badenoch who put on, says she's putting her name forward, uh, also uh, po possibly Penny Mordaunt and, uh, and, and Ben Wallace. So th this bar being set very high at 100 and when the two have been selected by MPs then the Conservative Party as a whole will vote all 160,000 of them. Now it's going to be done online, Charles, which raises another interesting question because anything on the internet now we know can be interfered with by international players and let's name them Russia, China. Uh, they could well uh, uh, interfere with, with, the, with this election of a new leader of the Conservative Party. So I, I hope that all the checks and balances and all the technical know-how will be put into place to stop any kind of fiddling with, with, with the results. So uh, it's a tall order to produce a new leader w by a week on Friday, October the uh, 28th. Sir Graham Brady says it can be done and the starting pistol uh, was, was fired tonight, uh, so we'll have to see how things progress over the coming days. But the tour is moving very, very quickly on this, Charles. That's the other point. Uh, I, I, in my journalist career, can't remember the Conservatives moving as quickly as this to choose a new leader and, and also a Prime Minister. Yes, absolutely. It's been described as lightning speed. And, and there are a lot of people, John, internationally, who are wondering if there is a fundamental problem with Britain's political system at the moment. Or is it the Conservative Party that's in a difficult and unhappy place at the moment with ideological splits, divisions and animosities? 
I think you've nailed it, Charles. I think it is the Conservative Party ha has got a big problem. 200 years old, they've been in power in this country for, for 12 years, and that's, that's a long time. Uh, and it's not the Conservative Party uh, t today in 2022 that people elected in, in 2019. It's, it's Democrat, it's, 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 it's left of centre. That wasn't the vote, that wasn't what Boris Johnson campaigned on and won an 80 seat majority back in 2019. The Conservative Party tonight, Charles, is, is broken frankly in my opinion. They're going to be booted out of office at some point. Uh, there's calls for a general election, and we can perhaps talk about that in a moment. But well, I, I think we are seeing the, the, the end of this, this old institution, which will reform, I'm sure, in, in the coming, coming years. It may be into two different parties, one to the right uh, to accommodate the likes of Sola Braverman, perhaps, as leader, and one so, so, to, to the left, centre-left. Who knows? But uh, I, I think we are seeing a, 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 a definitely a watershed in the history of the Conservative Party. Yes, and uh, John, you, you mentioned uh, Boris Johnson, the former Prime Minister there. I mean, we're hearing that he might stand in the leadership contest next week. I mean, what's being made of that? Is he the candidate that the Conservatives might unite around? Boris Johnson at this hour is sunning himself in the Caribbean, Charles. However, there are reports on uh, social media that he's, he's actually flying back to put his hat in the ring. Now, uh, of course, he has a lot of support inside the Conservative Party and a lot, lot of opposition inside the Conservative Party. But there's the tantalizing prospect that if he does put his hat into the ring, that he and Rishi Sunak, who is currently a front runner with the bookies, uh, for, for, for the leadership could be going head to head. Now that will be a, 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 a fascinating race, Charles. So don't rule anything out. Uh, Boris Johnson supporters saying he, he's not saying he's not coming back. And there are reports on social media tonight to say that he is preparing to fly back from holiday in the Caribbean. And uh, we all know Boris Johnson uh, is a vote winner. I mean, he. Uh, produced a conservative majority the biggest in 40 years uh, uh, just uh, back in 2019. I mean, um, um, he has huge charisma. Uh, uh, is it time for him to come back? I'm not sure whether the British public have actually forgiven him for, for uh, all his transgressions during COVID. But remember, it's not the British public that's voting for a new leader. It's the Conservative MPs worried about their seats uh, and want a, a, another win. And it's also the Conservative Party, Charles. John, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. John Cookson, Arise Chief Correspondent, talking to me there from Westminster in London.